Hey there, it's Aviva from Elementor. Welcome back to how to build a blog in Elementor. In our previous lesson, we learned how to manage multiple authors on a website. And in this lesson, we'll learn important tips for managing a blog from a marketing perspective, as well as gain insight into strategies we can use to make our blog profitable. From freelancers and small businesses to agencies and big brands, a blog is a powerful way to market your expertise, expand your audience reach, and increase sales. But for the blog to be an effective marketing tool, it needs to be properly set up, and with a few minor adjustments, we can use it to generate income. To make our blog profitable, we first need to make our blog easy to find and easy to read. The best way to achieve this is to use a third-party plugin for search engine optimization, such as Rank Math or Yoast SEO. We'll use Rank Math for this lesson. This plugin offers a variety of helpful tools. Not only can we use it to control the SEO aspect of the website, we also get valuable information that helps us write better articles, including receiving tips with relevant keywords, which increases the ranking of our site. We'll begin by installing the Rank Math plugin. Use the Finder to quickly navigate to the plugin screen. Click Add New and search for the Rank Math plugin. We'll click Install Now. And after activating it, we'll be redirected to this screen, offering to connect using a free account. We'll choose Advanced and click Start Wizard. The first thing we can do here is set the site's type. In Xander's case, it's already set to a personal blog. Next, we can add our site's logo that will be displayed in Google search results. And in case we share a page or post from our site that doesn't have a featured image, we can set a default image for shared content on social media. Continuing on, we can connect our site to Google services, such as Google Search Console and Google Analytics. This allows us to verify our site ownership in Google Search Console, track page and keyword rankings, set up Google Analytics, and submit sitemaps to the Google Search Console. In the next screen, we have the option to choose our sitemap configuration. We'll leave these settings as is. In our next step, we have the option to set up some SEO tweaks, such as automate SEO tasks, redirect attachment pages, and more. We'll leave this screen as is as well and continue to the last screen. From here, we can return to the WordPress dashboard. But before we do, let's activate some important settings to avoid errors on our site. Remember in Lesson 9 when we talked about 404 pages? As we mentioned in earlier lessons, they may be reached due to a mistyped URL or if a page's slug has been changed. In order to minimize the frequency of our visitors reaching 404 pages, we can monitor which 404 errors visitors encounter on our site and how often. Then, in the event that they come across it often, we can redirect them to a different page. Both people and search engines aren't fond of error pages, so this can help us enhance user experience and make the site more SEO friendly. Back in the Rank Math setup, click Setup Advanced Option and skip ahead to the 404 plus redirection. Here, we'll activate 404 Monitor, which will let us know if visitors or search engines bump into any 404 error pages while browsing our site. Then, we'll toggle Redirections On, which will activate the option to create temporary or permanent redirections on our site. That way, if there's a specific page users see often, or if we changed a page's slug for any reason, we can simply add a redirect to prevent both human visitors and search engines from visiting the 404 page unnecessarily. Click Save and Continue and go back to the WordPress dashboard. 
This will take us to Rank Math SEO settings. To see if there are any 404 errors on our site, we can go to 404 Monitor under Rank Math. It keeps a log of broken URLs that lead to 404 pages. If you find a URL that repeats a lot of times, simply add a redirect to a more relevant place and keep your visitors happy. Speaking of logs, let's talk about the RSS feed. RSS, or Really Simple Syndication, is basically a feed of our site's content that makes sharing the site's content very simple. Many websites, from news channels to podcasts, use the RSS feed to share their content, which can then be read by RSS readers, such as Feedly or Google News. This allows users to consume content from different sources, all from the same place, by subscribing to their favorite feeds. We can also use a third-party service to create automations based on our RSS feed activity, such as to send our subscribers a newsletter every time we publish a blog post. We can use Rank Math to set up the content that will appear before and after each of our posts using dynamic variables. Begin with setting up the blog's title by using the blog link variable, followed by the featured image and post link variables. Then add the content that will follow our posts content, but this time we can use a bit of text mixed up with the variables, making a dynamic phrase like the post, whichever post we're reading, was written by Xander Banks and first appeared on Xander Travels. Let's save our changes. This is great, but Rank Math and other SEO plugins offer many more additional options. Entering any page or post edited with Elementor, we'll see a new tab has been added to our panel for SEO settings. This gives us a preview of how our page will look in search results, and we can use these tips to make crucial adjustments to our posts and enhance the overall user experience. We can find these options in the WordPress editor when writing posts as well. If you don't see this menu open, you can access it by clicking here. We can also use Rank Math to add a breadcrumbs widget to our posts. No, I'm not talking about the famous German fairy tale Hansel and Gretel, although it is the origin of this element's name. A breadcrumb is an element that reveals the user's current location in a site and allows them to quickly navigate between different pages. You've probably seen these on many websites, where you can see the name of the website followed by the name of the category, and finally, the name of the post. It helps our visitors understand where they are on the website and also increases your SEO score. Before we can add breadcrumbs to our posts, we'll first need to activate this feature in Rank Math. Under Rank Math, go to General Settings, and then Breadcrumbs. Toggling it on, we'll see all these options become available. First, we'll set the separator characters. Since Xander uses many emojis in his site, we'll use this pointing emoji to fit his brand. We can choose to either show or hide the homepage link. We'll leave this as is and give the homepage a label. Another option is to add a prefix to the breadcrumb, such as, you're here. Furthermore, this allows us to rename the titles for archives, search results, and 404 labels. Below, we can choose to hide or show the post title and category. When we're done, save changes, copy the Rank Math shortcode, and go to the single post template. From the Widgets panel, search for and drag the shortcode widget into your template. Now simply paste the code we copied earlier and click Apply. Yay! So we've seen how we can improve our site to make it more accessible both for our users and for search engines. Now how about we give ourselves an upgrade? 
While we're here, let's see how we can use more of the space in this article to promote some of Xander's products and perhaps increase his income by adding third-party ads to the site. Let's begin with promoting Xander's products using the sidebar, which is an excellent place for this purpose. Xander has an ebook he's selling, which is already promoted on his homepage. So rather than create this whole call to action element from scratch, we'll simply copy it. Use the Finder to access the home page. Then locate the widget we need and copy it. Back in the single post template, scroll down a bit and paste the widget right under the newsletter box. Perfect. Now, we can also use the extra space in the sidebar or at the bottom to show third-party ads on our site, providing Xander with a commission for each ad a user clicks. That usually looks something like this. To add banners to our template, we'll first need to sign up for a specific service. The most common platform for this is AdSense. Then we'll use the HTML widget with corresponding HTML snippet pasted in. The last step in setting up our website is to make our site searchable. We'll go into Settings and uncheck the checkbox for discouraging search engines from indexing our site. Great, now you have everything you need to set up, build, and run a blog. In our next and final lesson, we'll recap what we've learned in this course, as well as discuss the next steps for creating the best website possible. So click to keep watching. See you there.